Hello everybody, this is Dennis K0TX with Digirig. Today we are looking at modifying Digirig's uh, configuration. You can change the electrical levels on the serial port to make it work with particular radios. So by default, uh, the Digirig is configured for serial uh, port for logic levels. This is 0 to 3.3 volts, uh, both lines in and out. Um, some radios use uh, RS-232 levels, for example, uh, Elecraft KX or many Yesus and many Kenwoods use RS-232 ports. Those are traditional serial ports like used to be used for mice and uh, modems. Uh, the electrically, that means that uh, levels change between minus 12 to plus 12 volts, which is, as you can tell, it's significantly different. And uh, there is a CIV configuration used in ICOMs uh, that uses sort of like a simplex single line um, logic levels, 3.3 volt signals. And there is also a TX500, which is basically logic levels with additional power supply output. So we'll start with getting access to the PCB inside the digirig. Four screws on one side. All right, and here's the board. As you can see, it's the revision 1.9. So, in this uh, tutorial, is for revision 1.9 and no other revision. So, in future or previous versions, it will be different. So, um in the logic levels configuration, the default, there is a continuity between these two pairs of pads. So I can demonstrate that with, with the continuity tester. So if we were to check the continuity here, and here it rings through. So if we want to switch to RS-232, we need to remove those traces that are covered by solder mask. And we need to establish three pairs uh, three connections between three pairs of pads here on the other side. So I'm going to start with light cuts with the exacto knife, and I'm going to increase the pressure over time, and then I'm going to change the angle to create sort of like a V groove there. Make sure I remove the trace completely. It's important to keep keep the cut strictly between the pads so we don't damage any unrelated pads around the PCB. So now that I feel like a knife went all the way to the fiberglass, I can confirm the lack of continuity now between these pads. And we are good. So now I'm gonna heat up my soldering iron and I'm gonna use some of this uh, rosin based flux. Okay. And the rosin core uh, solder. So we're going to establish all three connections. And here we are. So, for to be sure there is nothing going on that we don't want to go on. I'm going to check the continuity between neighboring solder blobs and we are good. There's no unwanted connections where there shouldn't be any. Okay, so now I'm going to use alcohol pads to remove extra flux. And this one is ready to go. Okay. So next, we'll do CIV configuration. I'm get a new energy jerk here. I'm gonna get to the PCB. Oh, 
Okay, so with CIV, same story. We start with cutting the existing traces. Okay, that looks good. Continuity test. And that's good too. Okay, so for CIV, we have um, like L-shaped pattern where the central pad connects to the top pad and that connects to the corner pad. So I start with just depositing solder on the pads. And then I make the connection between center and the top and then top and corner one. Okay, so that's our pattern. So now I'm going to test the continuity to make sure that we don't have any extra connections. Specifically with the one here, so there should be no connection and also no connections to any neighboring pads. There is an uh, internal connection between that uh, solder pad and this corner pad, so that's normal. Okay, so next thing we're going to look at um, is if we need to re remove the configuration and revert it to the logic level. So what we do, remove the solder pads that we, solder jumpers that we added, like so. And then we put the solder pads, solder jumpers rather, where they should be initially, default configuration. Okay, and we make sure there's no other connections there. Again, important to make sure that there are no unwanted connections, like for example these, or between the adjacent solder pads. And we're good. So, next thing, if uh, we want to activate the attenuator, we need to remove the existing connection between these pads here. So if we were to test initially, there is a continuity there. If we want to activate 20 dB attenuator, we're going to be removing that connection and confirming that there is none. And we're good. So now attenuator is activated. So. Uh, finally, the TX500 configuration is the default configuration like we see here, except we add the solder blob on 3.3 volt pads, like, I'm going to do it here for demo. And now it's TX500 configuration. All right, um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the community forum at forum.digirig.net. And that's all for today. We'll see you next time.